<laughs> What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? This is going to be your review for Love and Marriage Hunt. <clears throat> Excuse me, Love and Marriage Huntsville, season one, episode fourteen. So we wake up. Um, we sort of pick up where we left off last week with Kimmy and Maurice having this moment. And you know, I have to be honest, Kimmy and Maurice are my favorite couple on the show, and I love them so much, and I really, really do. Um, it really breaks my heart to see them going through this moment, but it is so real to me, and it's so raw. And I feel Maurice is torn. You know, like he said, I'm choosing between my son and my wife. Now, you know, it goes without saying that where you really made your fatal mistake is the fact that you did not have the conversation prior to. And I'm not really sure why he chose not to have the conversation. I'm not sure if he was afraid of what Kimmy's response was going to be or if it really truly was. He's still getting used to being in married mode and, and not moving unilaterally. Does that make sense? Even though him and Kimmy been dating forever. But anyway. Um, but they have a moment and what I like is that they 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 were hugging and they were talking it through. Even though they're not quite eye to eye, they, they haven't quite gotten there yet, but there is, the dialogue is happening. And so, I like it. I like it. I like it. Um, we have um, Letitia and Marceau. Now, Letitia is still, Marceau was like, look, because, you know, everybody's getting together for breakfast. Everybody's coming down and they're cooking one big breakfast. And Marceau was like, you know, he apologized. See, this is how dudes are. He apologized. I accepted it. I'm ready to move on. Here's how women do. Well, I don't, Letitia, well, I don't think, you know, his apology was sufficient. And I'm still waiting for him to be more specific with his apology. And Marcel was like, well, what, what do you expect? Like, are you waiting for him to, like, rub my, kiss my feet or something? Like, what is it that you want? But see, Again, and it's going to come up later on, so I'm not going to dwell on it too much. But again, we're dealing with Letitia and her insecurity over this whole 20 girlfriend. You wanted him to specifically say, I'm sorry for saying your husband cheated on you. That ain't what, that, even if that ain't, that's just not, no. That's not going to happen. For a variety of reasons, that's not going to happen. Um. So... But they're downstairs cooking breakfast and everybody's down, you know, having a good time. You know, this looks like it was a really good, I mean, they had a couple of tense moments, but we're getting there. Now, uh, Maurice and um, um, Kimmy come down and their team Reese um, shirts. Hers said, he's my something. And she and his says, she's my everything in the arrow's point. Really cute. It was really cute. Now, of course, they just had this real intense moment upstairs, but... You know, they still they still here for the group action and of course, you know, Maurice was like, you know, when I when I, you know, planned the shirts, you know, I wasn't really expecting to, for us to have this moment, but it is what it is. And that daggone Marceau, y'all, I love me some Marceau. I think in every episode I have a hate moment and a love moment, but he cracked me up in this moment. He told my son, they come down here dressed like they on their way to Six Flags or something. Now his Six Flags is our our King's Dominion. And I'm telling you, anybody who grew up in the D.C., Maryland, Virginia area in the 90s and didn't go to Kings Dominion with matching outfits on with either their boyfriend or their best friend, you ain't really lived. I got pictures to this day of me in matching outfits with my best friend and with my boyfriend. Honey, so I knew exactly what Marceau was talking about, and it was hilarious. Marceau is funny. Marceau is funny. Anyway, um... Then we have a new couple showed up that, you know, we were waiting for them to get there. Um, they, I guess, had to come in late or whatever. And so that's cool. And we, you know, everybody's having breakfast and everything. Um, Kimmy and Melody have, like, a little f cute moment because Melody, Melody got on a little lingerie, honey. She's showing the girls off a little bit. Um, and, you know, Melody was like, look, I done seen these ladies wear all kinds of stuff with their boobies hanging out, with their girls hanging out. You know, it was good for the goose, it's good for the gander. Now, I think she was trying to make Martell a little, you know, let me show you what you missing moment. I really think that's what it was about. But I ain't mad at you, Melody. I ain't mad at you. Um, Letitia gives her gifts to the new couple. Um, and this couple, I don't, I don't know. They ain't seem like they knew what to do. 
with the gifts. They seem a little, I don't know. They seem a little like, do you have a receipt for these? Because we're not going to use them. Like, that's how they feel. But okay. But they seem like really nice people, so I ain't trying to, you know. Now, it's raining, so some of the outdoor activities that they have planned, they can't do. So they were saying, look, we've got, and basically the house is laid. They have, they got an indoor putt-putt at the house, okay? They got a jacuzzi that looked like it's, it fit comfortably at least six people because all of the women were in there except for Melody. Um, so that's what, that's four women. And so they had a space for Melody. Probably had two more. So yeah, my math was right. Um, they had foosball tables and, and all kinds of stuff. Now, let me tell you what I'm surprised at. Carlos, Maurice, my, all y'all, all of y'all. Here's what I'm surprised at. I didn't see nobody playing cards. Now, let me tell you something. Me and a group of three other couples, four other couples, Oh, it's going to be some card talking, shit talking going on up in there. Now, I particularly, my my game of choice would be Big Wiz. Uh, but I will play some spades, too. And I'm just not understanding why I didn't see nobody slapping no cards on the table. But, okay, I'm going to let y'all have that. Maybe y'all edited that out. Did y'all edit that part out? Because that would have been perfect. A spades tournament on a rainy day? That would have been perfect, but neither here nor there. The guys were kind of off doing their thing. The ladies were kind of off doing their thing. So Melody started having stomach cramps, and she wasn't feeling very well. And she went upstairs and lay down. Now, before I get to that part, Mar Mar um, uh, Martel called his therapist and had a, like an online session, and he was explaining to his therapist how he's sleeping on the bunk bed. He was like, you know, we here, we in this nice spot. I thought this would be a good opportunity for us to try to reconnect. And she got me sleeping on the other side of the house in the kids' room on the bunk bed. And the therapist said, basically what I interpreted from what the therapist said was, I've really done all I can do for you. What At this point, I don't know what else to say to help you get what you need to get with your wife without talking to her. Because I can know I can't speak for her and I don't know what it is that she wants from you. If you're doing all of these things that you claim that you're doing to try to get your wife back, then at this point the conversation needs to be had with her to figure out what does she need from you to get you guys to a better place. And I think that's valid. I think that's a, a valid statement and valid advice. Um so Martel goes to check on Melody. Melody tells him, I want a pickle. He was like, what, huh? She said, look, I think I'm pregnant. Now, Martel's uh, 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 initial look was, the hell? But then he was like, well, look, I think this is a good thing. I think this is something that will help us bring ourselves together. Now, in the confessional, Melody was like, women, y'all know good and daggone well that getting pregnant is not going to help a man be faithful. And I said, Melody... You are absolutely correct. That is not going to happen. Um, and, of course, um, of course, um, Martell is like, no, yes, I am, yes, I am, yes, I am. And I'm like, no, no, you're not, no, you're not, no, you're not, but okay. So then we have, um, I'm sorry. I was looking at something. Something caught my attention. My bad. So then, um, she was talking about, and he was like, well, how do you, you know, are you sure? She said, you know how I know I'm pregnant? Because I've been pregnant three times before, and I know what my body does. I know how my body feels. She said, but we do need to go to a doctor and get it confirmed. And they both agreed that until they got it confirmed and they, you know, that they wouldn't tell anybody. Good decision. You just don't, you, y'all got enough people giving commentary. Wait till you know that you know that you know. Figure out how y'all going to handle it and move forward from there. So I thought, I think that that's a very valid, uh, um, I mean, a very good decision, okay? Now, the guys end up having a conversation with Maurice. Maurice ends up letting them know what's going on, why Kimmy's upset, and the situation. And, you know, they basically told him the same thing that everybody else is saying, like, look, that probably wasn't your best decision. Now, Sadark is telling him, you need to exhaust all options with her staying in Michigan. 
And basically what Sadark was saying is buy a house up there, a condo up there so you can travel more often so you don't have to worry about hotels and stuff like that and just go and just go back and forth more often. Go take her to court, pay for a lawyer, put the money and resources into paying for a lawyer so that you can get custody. But this is not a good idea. And then they were asking him, well, where is she going to live or whatever? And he tells them, well, you know, I got rental property. You know, she can stay there. And then they said the same thing that I said last week. If you if you and Kimmy decided this is a good idea, y'all need to put a time limit on this free ride, okay? Because, and, and I ain't trying to get too out left field, but I'm even questioning. No, I ain't even going to say that. I ain't even going to say that. You need to put a time limit. Or how long you're going to allow this man and woman to live in your property for free. Six months, a year, you know, let's see how it works out. If after a year everybody's happy and everybody thinks that this is working out, fine. Then what we're going to do is we're going to make this more permanent. And even if you continue to let them rent, uh, live in your home, your rental property, and you want to charge them below market rent, but they should be paying something, like, Ain't no free rides. Like, we all grown. We are all grown. Um, and Maurice was just like, look, I don't know what it is y'all want me to say. You know, I'm trying to do what's in the best interest of, of me, my family, my son. And he was like, my son staying in Michigan is not, the, is not the plan. That is not the end goal. So me buying property in Michigan just so I can go back home more often, that is not what I want. That's not the end goal. The end goal is for him to be living with me full time. And y'all know Marceau was like, mm-mm, nah, bruh. Nah. Nah. Now Martel was like, I get it. I understand. You do whatever you have to do to get your child home, to get your son with you. The the, the barbs, the jabs at the other guys' um, dedication to their children, we could live without. We could live without all of that. But I did understand where Martel was coming from, from the point of view of, look, I feel Mar Maurice. I got Maurice's back. I'm going to let the rest of that slide. Now... Kimmy and Melody have a great, great moment because I think that we have seen Melody as, so far this season, we've seen her as very aloof, very hard, very dismissive of the other ladies. She, her and Kimmy have maintained a decent relationship, but I really felt like that Melody was really sort of keeping herself sort of distant. And I don't know if that's a result of how she interpreted some of the things last season that were said. But this was a really good scene between Melody and um, Kimmy. And Kimmy confided in Melody about how she felt about what was going on with um, Maurice and the decisions and the fact that he didn't come to her and how she felt. And, you know, her biggest thing was, I don't think he took my feelings into consideration when he made this decision. And I think Melody did a really good job of listening and giving, giving good advice. You know, sometimes people just need you to listen. And and say the right things in that moment. And, you know, Melody was like, so wait a minute. Um, he ain't ask you first? And she was like, oh, no, nah, hell no. Nah. You know, but they had a really good moment. Even to the point where Melody got emotional. Now, I think part of that might be the hormones with the baby thing. But she did get emotional about them and their relationship and it just being in a good place and not letting this mess it up. And I feel the same way. Like, I love them. You know what I mean? And I felt the same way. So I felt you on that with Melody. And I thought this was a really, really good moment with them. And they, they joked and they, they ended the, by kind of like tickling each other, roughhousing or whatever. But, you know, in that moment, I'm glad that Kimmy had somebody to talk to and I'm glad that she had somebody that was listening to her and that she could share that moment with and said the right things in that moment. I thought that was a great, great moment. That was a great moment. Um, then we have a moment with the ladies in the hot tub. Now, Melody didn't join them, so it was the two women from the other couple, Sadar's wife and the couple that had just gotten there. And then Letitia and Kimmy. And Kimmy came late because she had gone to check on Melody first. 
Um, and so they were talking and Letitia was basically expression, expressing her issues with Melody. And I can appreciate that the women did not bad talk Melody. They didn't talk no trash about Melody. And they basically told Letitia, look, you need to talk to Melody. Like you really need to figure this out and you need to clear it up. And they were like, you know, do you think that she meant to be malicious? She's going through a lot and maybe she's not giving you the response that you want or the time that you want because she's really dealing with what she's dealing with, which I think that's a valid. I do think that that's valid. I think some of it is Melody being Melody, but I do think that some of it is coming from that place of Melody processing and really trying to figure out, one, processing her situation, and two, figuring out who her real friends are. I really do. Um... They recapped what happened the night before and, you know, how everything went down with that or whatever. Um, and Martel, you know, sort of, and, and Martel and Marcel sort of making up or whatever. Um, they talked about Melody kind of throwing it out there that he wasn't, that he didn't, they didn't have fidelity, infidelity issues until he started hanging out with them, which we talked about that last week, so whatever. Um... Well, basically, at the end of the conversation, they, the ladies were kind of telling Letitia that, you know, maybe you need to sit down and talk to Melody again. Maybe you need to try to have a conversation with her again. And Letitia even said, you know, I do miss my friendship with her. I do want to be friends. I don't like the space that we're in. You know, and she got a little emotional. She got the crying and everything, too. And I believe her. I believe that she doesn't like where their relationship is. Um, but we're going to get to that in a second. <clears throat> um, so they're having, so the, the other great activity they had, they had like a, a couple's cook off kind of thing where it looks like each couple had a different dish that they had to make for dinner and they had to work together, um, for, you know, and I guess whoever finished first or, you know, I guess they had some sort of judge to find out who won or whatever. But again, I feel like they had some really great couple type activities and then they had great away time where the guys did their thing the ladies did their thing it was a really nice weekend it seemed like maurice can't make he said he could make cereal and the first ingredient he named was water that's what we call ghetto cereal when y'all didn't have no water no more milk but you still wanted that bowl of frosted flakes that's ghetto cereal maurice or when you didn't have a lot of milk so you added a little water to stretch the milk out. I don't know what kind of cereal you make in Maurice. You make too much money for ghetto cereal. Anyway. So, but yeah, so Kimmy was like, yeah, so you, I, I'm cool. They made him the timekeeper, honey. Now, quiet as is kept. If this were my trip with my group of friends, I probably would have been a timekeeper too. So Maurice, me, you, but I can make a bowl of cereal. Maurice. That I can do. Anyway, um, Martel is taking this moment to be a little flirty flirty with Melody, honey. He coming up behind her because he like, you know, this new baby coming is changing the game. And I think this would be a perfect opportunity to bring us back together. And Melody was like, yeah, I feel him being a little flirty flirty. I see what he doing. I'm peeping your game, but don't get it twisted. This is just for the night. Tomorrow, tonight. You still going to be in that bunk bed, okay? So they're making dinner and everything. And towards the end of the meal, when everything's sort of wrapping up, Letitia asked Melody if they could go outside and talk. Now, Melody was already like, Lord, okay. I mean, she she didn't say it. She didn't say it. She didn't have an attitude. This is what she said in her confessional. She was like, okay, sure. And she went on out there. Letitia, you irking my nerves. And here's the thing. I have no idea if Marceau has ever cheated on his wife. I don't know. That ain't my place. Until there's some receipts dropped, I ain't in that. However, comma, Letitia, whether Melody was trying to start mess, whether Melody was being messy, I don't know. Or whether Melody had a legitimate concern for you as a friend. What she was trying to explain to you was, 
you don't understand how you make other people who've been through some things feel when you make statements like, I know my husband would never cheat on me. I ain't feel like my husband would ever cheat on me either. Yet, here I am. Well, I don't know, but I know my husband would never cheat on me. I know. And Melody was like, look, all I'm going to say to you is, your husband and my husband have been really good friends for a while. And maybe there's some things. No, no. Mm -mm. My husband has never cheated on me. The other part of the conversation was them sort of recapping what happened when they spoke the last time at the coffee shop. And, well, no, and Melody was trying to let Letitia know, look, you have ways about you that are very condescending. This is how I'm interpreting it. You know, when things are being said, like at the dinner table last night, you shake, you know, you're doing this with your neck and you making comments and you sort of, and, you know, Letitia was like, well, I wish you had told me because I didn't realize that I did these things. See, this is what I'm saying about communication. But then when Melody tries to communicate with you, now, again, you might not like what she's saying. And I'm not saying that what she's saying is right. I'm just saying you cut her off before she could even finish her point. And Melody was like, you know, I never went below the belt with you. I never threw out mistresses and side chicks and, and other things. But yet, that's what you did to me. You know, and what was funny was they kept splicing back to every time Letitia said what she didn't do, they showed what Letitia did it. I didn't say that. They showed what Letitia said it. I never did that. They showed what Letitia did it. So Letitia... You're not innocent in this conversation. Now, Melody is Melody, but you're not innocent in this conversation. And Melody was just trying to get you to understand her point of view. And it's like you wouldn't even listen. You didn't even want to hear it. So at that point, Melody was like, you know what? I'm done. Like, I'm not going to keep sitting here arguing over the same thing. You hear what you want to hear. You think what you want to think. And I'm done with it. Like, it is what it is. Um. So they go back in. Now Letitia want to leave. She telling Marcel, I want to go. I want to go. And he was like, what? He said, so you're going to let that run you out of here? You're going to let her run you out of here? Like, don't give her that much energy. Don't give her that much energy. We're going to finish up the night. We're going to have a good time. We're going to have dinner. And then we're going to we'll go home in the morning. We'll go home in the morning. So they have dinner. And they must have let everybody know that the last meal was going to be dressed up. Because um, they all come down, honey, looking nice. They got their suits on and they, they gowns and everything. And looked like dinner was good, honey. So then they get that they get to having this conversation at dinner and they get to talking about couples and longevity. They've been asking Kimmy and Maurice how long y'all been married now and it's been almost a year and you know they're talking about um Letitia and um Marceau get to talking about how it's been thirteen years and how wonderful it's been and how great life is and how love is love. So here go Melody. Well, do y'all think that men could really be faithful? I mean, I mean, do you just think it's an unreal expectation for us to expect men to be faithful and not and not be, you know, um, in a marriage? I mean, and, um, and not be unfaithful in their marriage. So of course, everybody know what she's doing, and everybody looking around like, oh, okay, here we go. The men all uncomfortable and shit. Martell sitting there like, damn, damn, damn. And so, Letitia's. You know, she's talking about, you know, um, how wonderful her marriage is and how great things are. And Marceau talks about how they're closer now than when they first got married. And, you know, it was real nice. So then Melody says, well, you know, somebody told me recently that their husband would never cheat on them. And, I mean, you know, I felt that way, too, until it happened. So I'm just wondering. So Letitia was like, well, I was the one who said it. It was me. And it's just not something I've ever dealt with. And Melody said, well, I never dealt with it either until I had to deal with it. And she said, well, I'm just saying that my husband would never cheat on me. It's not something we've ever dealt with in our relationship. My husband never cheated on me. Baby, you could hear a pin drop in that room. Like, it's a dark turn to the side like nobody was gonna make eye contact with Marceau in that moment now I ain't saying that that make him guilty that is not what I'm saying all I'm saying is in that moment 
And I think people will, I think Letitia was waiting for people to speak up for Marceau and be like, yeah, we know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ain't nobody say nothing. Honey, Melody had to turn away from the table to, to stop himself from laughing, honey. I mean, stop herself from laughing, honey. It was a mess. I said, Letitia, shut up. Because, again, I ain't saying that this man is cheating on you, but they are insistent that they know something that you don't know. And the more you insist that he's never, and all Melody kept saying to her was, stop saying the word never. Say yet. Because it, never is never. Anyway, y'all, it was a good episode. The couple's weekend looked like it went nice. You know, it was a couple of hiccups, but you know, you, you it is what it is, okay? Um, let me know what y'all think. Drop it in them comments. Peace.